Hi, so this is what I was babbling on about in video 1039. Now in 1039 we used this solid steel rotor because I had it from a generator and we were looking at the flux path through the rotor. And I said I don't think it matters that the flux path goes through the rotor, I only think it matters if the flux path has a path through the sea. So I built this plastic rotor. Let me give you a close up of it. Okay, so I've got the two C's that I was talking about, and here what we've got is a plastic rotor with these bits of metal. These bits of metal are actually just a stack of washers, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the C is midpoint between two bits of metal, and if I give that a pulse of uh, power, there we go, that's what you'd expect it to do, spins around so that the metal lies underneath the C. But it also moves this section of the rotor, so now this C is midpoint between these two metal bits. So if I swap that over... Sorry. And give it a pulse of power. It does the same thing and the rotor will continue. So what I need to do obviously is arrange some electronics that will pulse this on, then turn it off, this on while this is off and then turn it off and so on and that will make that rotor continue to turn. Now that is what I was talking about and the basis of the motor. So if these two C's were only electromagnets, that is they were a C shape of the metal laminates and they only had a coil around them, it would in fact be something called an axial flux reluctance motor. Now if you pop that into Google Scholar, you'll actually find a ton of research on these motors with their various benefits and detriments and why they're a good idea and why they're a bad idea. I like that. I like that because it means that you're going along the right track, you're not really going a bit loopy. Now I've got a paper here called Axial Flux Switch Reluctance Machines, a comprehensive review of design and topologies, I'll pop that title in the uh, description along with the DOI. It, it's an open access paper which discusses the ins and outs of these particular motors. Now, we have made a change to this motor, remember. This is not just an electromagnet. What this is doing is you've got magnets on there as well. You can see them right there and right there. So this is a magnetically assisted axial flux switched reluctance motor, which is... Quite a mouthful, really, and we're going to have to come up with a new, a new name, aren't we? But that's what this actually is. Now, switching flux and uh, magnetically assisted motors exist all by themselves. I mean, that's what the Flynn motor is. The Flynn motor is a magnetically assisted motor. What the Flynn motor does, though, it uses two coils and two magnets to switch that flux. What we're doing is using one coil and one magnet. We're also using the mass of the arm here. So we use that mass of arm to create reluctance in the same way you create resistance. And there is a tiny amount of magnetism in here, which is kind of cool because it holds the metal in place, but not enough that this can't overcome it relatively easily. But we're using one coil and one magnet to switch the flux, rather than the Flynn motor, which is you two uses two coils and two magnets. We've also got in an axial flux design, so that's why I think the motor is interesting and different, because the magnetic assist, I think, helps with the amount of power that magnet is going to draw. If you look up axial flux machines, you'll see that they're just electromagnets. Here we're using magnetically assist. Now there is a, 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 an interesting thing about the laminations. On the C, the laminations run in that direction, and on the stacks, which are washers, they run in that direction. Now, according to my reading, the 90 degree twist in the direction of the laminate actually is important. I didn't know that, I just did it that way and read it later and thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So, we are getting toward the motor that we want. Obviously, I just switched those by hand. What I need to do now is build some electronics that will switch them. But it would look like two coils would be enough to get that rotor to turn. Now, we discussed improvements on it earlier and about a whole bunch of coils, but it does look like two coils or pairs of two coils will be enough to get the motor to, return, uh, to turn. Anyway, I thought I'd keep you up to date with where it is. That's what we've actually done. We've actually built the prototype we now need to put some switching in there to get continuous rotation, but that on-off to move it round in a gradual stepwise motion is certainly working. The disc is fine in plastic, and axial flux motors, they tend to use non-ferromagnetic materials like aluminium, because it will help with heat dissipation. We've used a lump of plastic, which is just fine. Anyway, thought I'd keep you up to date. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you're enjoying the project, and thank you very much for watching.